welcome to my presentation. I am Pia, a graduate student of the Department of Rural and Biosystems Engineering, Jhonam National University. My selected article is Electrical Effects Accompanying the Decomposition of Organic Compounds by M.C. Potter. The article was published in the Royal Society Journal in 1911. The order of the presentation will be followed by the introduction, materials and method, experiment, discussion, and conclusion. Introduction Electric currents in plants are essentially an indicator of vital phenomena, and that differences in electric potential are related to respiration and carbon assimilation. Waller's investigations have shown that the excitation of living vegetable protoplasm gives an electrical response no less than that of animal protoplasm. He has demonstrated that leaves in a condition of active metabolism give an instant electrical response to the influence of sunlight. The evolution of caloric energy during fermentation or putrefaction is commonly recognized through this initial communication. Some experiments are described which were done to determine whether any EMF is developed when organic compounds are broken down through the fermentative activity of yeast and other organisms. Materials and method, the apparatus used here, consisted of a glass jar with a porous cylinder. The same type of nutrient fluid was kept in the glass jar and in the porous cylinder. Two platinum electrodes were used. The apparatus consisted of, 1, the cell, 2, galvanometer, 3, condenser, 4, mercury cups to facilitate connections with different cells, 5, Morse key. Cultures of microorganisms, when introduced into either the fluid in the jar, the outer fluid, or that in the porous cylinder, the inner fluid, under suitable conditions, set up a chemical action, the apparatus generally constitutes a type of galvanic cell. A Clark cell, discharged in the same manner through the galvanometer, served to display the number of refractions upon the galvanometric scale, which corresponded to the standard voltage. The fermentative motion of yeast upon solutions of sugar seemed to offer a promising subject for investigation, and ordinary commercial yeast in a very fresh condition, with glucose as a medium, was employed. Diaphragm can be constructed from parchment dialyzing tubes, cut into convenient lengths. It was convenient to take 50 gram of yeast and mix it with 100 cubic centimeters of water and apportion 10 cubic centimeters for each cell. The electrodes were connected, and readings taken on the galvanometer determined the constant relative charge on the electrodes. By this method, roughly the same quantity of yeast would be used for each cell, and the results of the experiments would be comparable to one with another. The result. With the ordinary standard of 5 grams of yeast at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and a 10% solution of glucose, an EMF of 0.32 volt was registered in 7 minutes. With 10% glucose, the maximum voltage of 0.32 was reached in 10 minutes. With 5%, it took 15 minutes to reach a maximum of 0.31 voltage. With 30% glucose, the maximum voltage was 0.26, with a slow development, taking 23 minutes to reach. Thus, 40% glucose registered only 0.18 volt after 90 minutes and 50% 0.08 after the same period. In the case of determining the effects of using different amounts of yeast, three cells were used at 23.5 degrees Celsius. With 5 grams of yeast, the voltage rose to its maximum of 0.36 in 10 minutes, and it was a rapid rising. Then, with 2.5 grams, the curve was gradual, and it reached 0.3 volts at the end of 2 hours. Assessment of these curves gives a striking indication of the greater speed of reaction conforming to the more active fermentation. Under diverse conditions of temperature, the outcomes vary in a corresponding method. When the yeast is introduced into a 10% glucose solution at 25 degrees Celsius a voltage of 0.3 is achieved in 9 minutes, and the maximum, 0.32, in 15 minutes. But at 17 degrees Celsius a voltage of 0.3 is not reached until after 20 minutes, and the maximum, 0.32, after 25 minutes. At 10 degrees Celsius the start was very slow, and there was a much steadier approach to the maximum, 34 minutes is essential for the development of 0.3 volt and 45 minutes for the maximum. It is exciting to find out that after the maximum voltage has been attained there is always a slight drop in the curve. At 50 degrees Celsius, there was no refraction of the galvanometer, the same thing happened at 0 degrees Celsius. 
These results establish that the EMF developed can only be attributed to the fermentative action of the yeast, and the electrical effects are the measure of the activity of the yeast. Also, the speed of the reaction varies with the amount of active yeast present in the cells. The maximum voltage recorded with yeast and glucose, or cane sugar, was 0.3 to 0.4. It was also found that the voltage is quite independent of the thickness of the platinum wire or the surface of the electrode. A small current can always be detected in the yeast glucose cells. And the voltage as registered by metal conductors is due to the charge collected in the fermenting liquid. In case of the effects of a short circuit in diminishing the EMF, 5 grams of yeast were used and a 10% solution of glucose at 28 degrees Celsius. The short circuits were being made at intervals of 15, 22, 36, 60, and 78 minutes after the introduction of the yeast. The effects of enzymes, the two enzymes invertase and diastase, both exhibited distinct electrical responses, although it was to a very small degree. To experiment with invertase, a quantity of yeast was ground in a mortar with sand and extracted with a small amount of water. After filtration, half of the solution was boiled. The invertase solution was added and cells were charged with 5 and 10% cane sugar. A small voltage was registered in both cases, which were 0.02 for the 5% and 0.03 for 10%. It is shown that the development of EMF was very gradual. To experiment with diastase, a cell was charged with a 5% starch emulsion added with 10 cc of a 5% solution of diastase. The EMF was 0.05 volt and the gradient curve development was gradual. Some other experiments. Hydrolysis of cane sugar in the solution of sulfuric acid showed an EMF was produced only to 0.02 volt and the sugar and sulfuric acid were zincative. This method shows how the hydrolysis proceeds and the speed with which this reaction dies away. Some experiments that were made with certain bacteria. The solution which was used here was a modification of Pasteur's solution. The E. coli communis developed an EMF of 0.308 volts at 30 degrees Celsius. In the case of B. violaceus, B. eufluorescens, and Sarcina lutea, no EMF was produced. The study of the electrical effects during well-known chemical actions by a galvanic cell is of interest for comparison with the chemical effects of fermentation. Using a 10% solution of sulfuric acid and 5 grams of granulated zinc, the condenser and galvanometer gave an EMF of 0.07 volts. Experimenting with phosphorus. The first signs of the development of any EMF were due to the low temperature of the cell, 10C, and with a higher temperature it was found to be considerably reduced. In this experiment, a stick of phosphorus was suspended partially immersed in the outer fluid, the temperature of the water in the jar being 10 degrees Celsius. Experimenting with, with potassium and sodium. A similar cell, with water in both jar and porous pot, gave an EMF when either metallic potassium or sodium was introduced into the jar. A study of this cell when charged with dilute sulfuric acid and zinc could gain importance for its bearing upon the action of yeast and glucose in a similar cell. Discussion. In case of the non-polarizable electrodes, the behavior of non-polarizable electrodes in a cell of this construction is of much interest, and an exact parallel is found between the action of these electrodes when used in conjunction with either a yeast glucose or a zinc sulfuric acid cell. Electrical action is developed both in the yeast glucose and in the zinc sulfuric acid cells, as shown by the current generated. The condenser method is not applicable with the use of non-polarizable electrodes. Cells were set up with a pair of platinum electrodes and a platinum one in the jar and another in the porous pot. In non-polarizable electrodes, the following facts were observed in platinum-platinum electrodes. After a short interval an EMF was developed which soon achieved its maximum and then gradually died away. Non-polarizable electrodes in both jar and porous pot. No EMF was developed, so the discharge of the condenser through the galvanometer produced no effect. Platinum in the jar, in non-polarizable electrode in the porous pot, an EMF was developed of much the same voltage. In the case of the non-polarizable electrode in the jar and platinum in the porous pot no EMF could be detected with the condenser, but an electric current was identified. 
These results establish that the EMF developed can only be attributed to the fermentative action of the yeast, and the electrical effects are the measure of the activity of the yeast. Also, the speed of the reaction varies with the amount of active yeast present in the cells. The maximum voltage recorded with yeast and glucose, or cane sugar, was 0.3 to 0.4. It was also found that the voltage is quite independent of the thickness of the platinum wire or the surface of the electrode. A small current can always be detected in the yeast glucose cells, and the voltage as registered by metal conductors is due to the charge collected in the fermenting liquid. In case of the effects of a short circuit in diminishing the EMF, 5 grams of yeast were used, and a 10% solution of glucose at 28 degrees Celsius, the short circuits being made at intervals of 15, 22, 36, 60, and 78 minutes after the introduction of the yeast. All these tests combined show that, though a current is certainly generated, no voltage can be registered with non-polarizable electrodes and this special form of the electrode is inappropriate for use with the condenser. They showed the existence of a difference in potential between the yeast glucose solution and the glucose solution, and the existence of an electric current passing in the cell from the yeast glucose to the glucose. In this investigation, only commercial yeast known as German yeast was used. This electrical method may be conveniently applied to study the dynamic activity of yeast and other organisms when growing under special cultural conditions. All these tests combined show that, though a current is certainly generated, no voltage can be registered with non-polarizable electrodes and this special form of the electrode is inappropriate for use with the condenser. In case of other electrodes, gold, nickel, tin, zinc, and aluminum were used. Conclusion A special type of galvanic cell with platinum electrodes, by means of which the electrical charges set free in the vital processes of microorganisms were collected and transferred to a condenser. The charge, as measured by a ballistic galvanometer, was found to correspond to an EMF of 0.3 to 0.5 volt between the fermenting and non-fermenting fluids. A difference in potential also occurs during hydrolysis either by enzymes or by weak acids. Distinct electric currents are found whichever form of electrode is used. Thank you.